Hello everyone, and welcome back to part two of the series where I'll show you how to make a soccer jump game in Scratch. Let's get started. So yesterday, we added basic movement and the core game mechanics. Today, we're going to improve those by adding particles, and it will graphically make the game look a lot nicer. Once again, if you want all the art I used in the game, link in the description. There's also a link down there as well for part one of this series, so you can go back and get all the code. So let's get coding. Whew. So, the sprite we're going to be doing most of this in is in this particle sprite down here. You'll see in the costumes, it has many costumes, ball trails, these two things, which are just these cubes, if I zoom out, you can see them, these two for jumping, a ring, and some lines, and then just more for some jumping and running. So what we're going to do first is in the particles sprite, what we're going to do first is in the particles sprite go ahead and make a new custom block. Make this one like make particles ID, add an input ID. You can make it run with that screen refresh. You don't have to. I recommend it though. Now what you're going to want to do is to make a new variable. Call this one particle ID. Make it for the sprite only. And then and right under here, set that to zero. Now, when green flag clicked, we're going to want to hide this sprite because we're going to be using clones. And then make a new variable. Call this one clone question mark. And this will just determine if it's a clone or the parent. For the sprite only, set clone to zero. Now, to explain the different types of particles we're using. So the first set is just for the ball. There's going to be a trail of a combination of green and white particles coming off the back of the ball. to make it look like it's actually moving, even though it's really not. So to do that, in the particle sprite, just right here in the make particles ID block, just do if, add an if else, if ID equals ball trail. Just like that. If that is so, we're going to want to go to x, y, and then inside the ball sprite, make two new variables, call them ball x for all sprites, and ball y also for all sprites. And then also inside the ball, whenever it moves, set ball x to x position, and ball y to y position. just like that. So now that we have that, we know where the ball is. So here you can just plug in those two variables right here. So go to ball x, ball y. Then just set particle ID to ID. And then create clone of myself. So bam, now we have that. Now, just for the clone script, when I start as clone, add an if else, you just copy this over. But instead of ID, we're going to be using particle ID. So if particle ID equals ball trail, then switch costume to make it because we have these two up here. So just switch costume to pick random one to two because we're cycling through those two. So operators, pick random one, two, two. Then you're just gonna show that clone right here. And then to add a bit of variety, so it's not just all in the same line, just add a little change Y by pick random negative one to positive one. I'll just add a little bit of offset. And then control, repeat 10 times, change ghost effect by 10. And then once all that is done, delete this clone. So that's all good, but there is one issue. 
there's nothing calling this. To fix that, go ahead and back over to the ball sprite. And then whatever it moves, add a broadcast block. Oops, not that. And just make this like at the very bottom. New message, ball move. Now just over here, particles. When I receive ball move, go to your custom block, make particles ID ball trail. So that's really good. However, there's an issue. If we run it, you'll notice that it will get very laggy and max out clones. Why is that? So every time we receive this, every one of these clones and all will make a clone of themselves. That's an issue when you have a clone making clone making clones. So to prevent this, that's why you have this. So as soon as they start as clone, change that variable by one. And then when I receive ball move, put it inside of an if bracket, if clone equals zero, just meaning if it's not a clone, then you can actually make them. Nice. Now we were to run this, you'll see that we have a nice ball trail. So now onto the other ones. As you see, we've only tackled the first two. We still have the jumping and then these. You might be confused what these are. This is just landing particles, then the running. So the next one, they're all very repetitive. So I'm, all of these are very repetitive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right here, show what you wanna just make this. So you can copy that, pause the video, then when you're ready, come back and watch the rest of it. So as you can see, I have added all this. There'll be another image up on screen. Pause it if you need to. Once again, all of these just right here spread all out. Nice. So now we just need, we already have this. We just need a way to call all of these because we have them and, but nothing will happen except for the ball trail. So to do that, let's go ahead and add some more of those. You can duplicate this over. When I receive, I already made these. You can just make them along with me. Ignore that one. I accidentally made that. When I receive jump, jump one. Get more there. Jump one. Daddy, I you the phone. Duplicate that over and jump two. So that one is the particles up and the second one is those arrow thingies. And then to call it over here with the player, when he's face pressed at the bottom of all this, at the top, sorry, broadcast jump. So now when we jump, we have those particles. You can't really see them. Just go ahead and change that background. Those temporarily, I can make it like a blue. Nice. Next up is back in the particle sprite. You'll see we have this jump three. This is when he lands, there'll be like grass that comes up. To do that, once again, I already made this, but you can go ahead and make it. Just one like, I haven't made this one, actually, landed. And at the bottom of this whole thing, and then back in particles, copy this over. Oops, not that. Make particles jump three when I receive landed. So now we can jump up, have the particles, and then land and more come up. You can customize this by just coming over here and making it repeat like. 10 times and 10, just make sure those stay proportionate. So now if we do it, 
they last for a tad longer. As you can see by this. One more thing with that though, when you do it, my mistake, you'll see that only one spawns or is created. The reason for this is just right here. We only calling it once when it lands. So just repeat that like 10 times and there's more. Once again, this is really customizable so you can really just go wild with this. So now the next one, as you can see, is running. I think it is, yeah, it's down here, running. So for this one, when I receive in the particle sprite, running, copy this over, get rid of that repeat, and then just do this running. And then back in the player, right up here, whenever he does that, broadcast running. So now, you have the small particles. But there's another issue that shows itself. When, whenever we jump, the particles are still there. When they shouldn't be because he's not on the ground. So the way we combat this is just if y velocity equals zero, then broadcast running. So it's right here. You can copy this one over, plot that there, replace that with y velocity. So now when we run this, whenever we jump, it isn't there, but when we're on the ground, it is. So there's that, but there is one more issue that I forgot to address. With that ball, you'll see that nothing really was happening. And more, one more thing you'll want to do inside the player sprite is just when I receive play, set y velocity to zero. So, I'm, this may be the last part of the series. It, if this video gets, let's say, seven likes, I'll make a part three where we'll add the scrolling background and main menu. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.